tonight on Connecticut's news station, a teen shot and killed. He loved that, to play the basketball. He was all the time here playing the basketball. And they kill him. Emotional reaction from the community tonight. And mall parking lot madness during primetime shopping. Tonight, the search is on for suspects who stole cars. Plus, parole problems at the Capitol. Why some lawmakers are concerned about new legislation. And get ready to sweat. We've got some real summer temperatures on the way later this week coming up. And social media scam alert. You're not going to know about it until you get your next phone. How scammers are targeting Facebook Marketplace users to hack their phones. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here on the News at 6. I'm Penn Coltman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. New Haven police are now on the lookout after a 16-year-old boy was shot and killed while in his driveway on Shelton Avenue on Monday night. The victim has now been identified as Mark Belongo. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc spoke with his family and joins us now live outside of police headquarters this evening. Julia. Hi, good evening to you both. As you can imagine, Mark's family is in shock tonight. We spoke with his mother who says this all feels like a dream. He was a good boy. You can ask everyone on the street. Nelia Bala lost her one and only child Monday night. Police say 16 year old Mark Malongo was killed while sitting in a car in his own driveway on Shelton Ave. For me, it's like a dream. I don't believe yet. Bella says her son was a friend to everyone and basketball was his passion. He was even playing right here earlier in the day. He loved that to play the basketball. He was all the time here playing the basketball and they kill him. Bella says Mark went to grab food at a nearby McDonald's Monday night. Shortly after he came home right before 8.30 p.m., she says she heard a loud bang. The person they were gunning for was probably targeted. We don't believe it was this kid. We think it was possibly mistaken identification. Chief Carl Jacobson says they're looking at all angles right now, but they don't have a clear answer for how a teenager who was not known to police lost his life. We don't know much. We know that he has good grades and attended school and um, never really been in trouble with the police or anything. Mark was a sophomore at Hill House High School. The district superintendent sending out a statement saying, quote, the death of this energetic, sweet young man is a profound loss felt by all members of the New Haven community. Our prayers are with Mark's family. For me, just, it's just like I'm going to see him again. It's just like he's going to come back home for me. Now, police are canvassing and looking at cameras in the area, but at this point, they don't have any information on a suspect. If you know anything about this case, please give New Haven police a call. We're live here in New Haven tonight. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Just heartbreaking, Julia. Thank you. Well, around the same time people were enjoying Memorial Day gatherings, police say that three cars were stolen from malls in West Hartford as well as Manchester. Around the same time, uh, police say that several suspects pulled a semi-automatic rifle on a man in a gym parking lot. That's where we find Fox 61 Samaya Hernandez, who is in Manchester with the details on the events that police say are all connected, Samaya. That's right, Jen. Yeah, and people that go to this gym here tell me that this isn't the first time that this parking lot has been targeted. They say last year cars were broken into eight of them, and that's when the gym invested in some cameras. But yesterday's crimes were a bit different, involved five to six suspects, two of them brandishing semi-automatic weapons. It was here outside of Planet Fitness on Middle Turnpike West, where Manchester police say a man was sitting in his car when two cars pulled up, parked nearby, and a handful of suspects donning ski masks or face coverings got out of the car and tried to open the passenger door. The man tried to leave when two of the suspects reportedly pointed guns at him before fleeing the scene. Jim patrons say they're not surprised. I'm always uh, aware of my environment. It's not just here. It's the world. Things are different. Things are changing. There's a lot more. There's a lot more angry people today. 
A lot more drugs and, and alcohol is going on. That incident happening in broad daylight on Memorial Day involving a car stolen from West Farms Mall in West Hartford and tracked near the nearby shops at Buckland Hills. The other suspect car taken from the mall where police were called around 5 o'clock after someone found broken glass where their car was parked and again at 6 o'clock when someone left Maggie McFly's to the same situation. Shoppers on alert Tuesday. It gives me something that I know I need to watch out for. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to do from now on. Well, don't go alone. Yes. Um, stay with your friends. Yes. And be safe. Yes. Hide your money. Hide your money. And and the cars involved in these incidents were all either Kias or Hyundais. If you know anything about this incident, contact Manchester Police. They are searching for the people involved. Live in Manchester, I'm Samaya Hernandez, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Scary stuff, Samaya. Thank you. Well, new tonight in Waterbury, where police are investigating an overnight homicide. It happened along West Main Street. Police say 24-year-old Drayvon Robinson was found shot in the street. He died at the hospital. Police have not released any information on a possible suspect in this particular shooting. A teen is facing charges after a gun was fired at the Trumbull Mall. Police say that two teens were being escorted out of the mall when one of them dropped a handgun that then discharged and a fired a shot into the ceiling. The teens ran away from the scene, but one was eventually taken into custody. Police are still searching for the second teen. The gun has also not been recovered. Another street takeover under investigation, this time in Hartford. Police say they responded to Reserve Road at 2.30 Saturday morning where cars were blocking the road and railroad tracks. Officers gave out 29 tickets and one firearm was seized. Police responded to the same area earlier in the month for a similar call. One arrest was made during that incident. Well, this comes as street takeovers have been on the rise in recent weeks. Groups have hit areas in Waterbury, Tolland, Hartford and Meriden. This weekend saw alone saw three other incidents, one in the Hartford Tunnel on I-84 West, a separate one in East Windsor, and another in Bethany. Police say a lot of the spectators at these takeovers tend to be teenagers. They're advising parents to be aware of where their children are as these events proven to be dangerous. All right, turning to the weather right, watch right now, a nice day out there across the state. Picture perfect. Yeah, perfect Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. We're back here in the nice weather continues on. Hi, Rich. Hi. Yeah, it's warm today. It will get warmer tomorrow and then downright hot heading into your Thursday and Friday of this week when we could end up breaking records. It's a nice clear sky in Hartford and a little bit hazy looking for New Haven right now. But in parts of southern Connecticut, especially there is very poor air quality due to wildfire smoke that's coming all the way from Nova Scotia. Instead of it being in the upper levels of the atmosphere, like the wildfire smoke we've had off and on for the last couple of weeks. This time it's at ground level and is reducing air quality. So you can actually see the visibility is down to five miles in areas like Oxford Airport, Monroe, Danbury. Meanwhile, it's at 10 miles or better right now for Meriden, and it is a little bit reduced in Hartford and Wyndham as well. So it just gives you an idea um, that their smoke is out there. And if you smell smoke, it may be from that. Temperatures are in the mid 60s to right around 70 degrees. The smoke should clear out for most areas as we head through the day tomorrow, but it may linger in southern Connecticut, especially along the shoreline for a little while longer. Heading through the evening tonight, we'll see temperatures dropping back into the 40s. And as we head through the day tomorrow, again, I said a smoky sky in spots, again, especially favoring southern, southeastern areas. Otherwise, it is a bright and warmer afternoon with temperatures climbing into the 80s inland, but staying in the 60s to around 70 degrees for the Connecticut shoreline. This is just the start of those warmer temperatures ahead. We'll talk about the heat, the records that could be under the gun for breaking, your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Rachel, thank you. To the Capitol now, Senate Republicans and victims' families once again outraged by commutation policy here in Connecticut. Yeah, they say they are disappointed in a new bill advanced by the House last week claiming an amendment to the measure silences of silences the voices of victims. Fox 61's political reporter Emma Wolfhorst joining us live here in studio now to break it down. Emma. 
Yeah, Ben, Jen, this bill passed the House last week. It would grant the legislature more authority in appointing the chair of the Board of Pardons and Paroles, which is the group that handles commutations in the state. This all started a few months ago when Senate Republicans raised concerns over a recent rise in commutations. Now, they say lawmakers are taking a step backward. Do we want to stand for reasonable steps and stand behind these victims and stand behind these victims' families, or do we want to stand behind the criminals that have been convicted of heinous crimes? Senate Republicans outraged Tuesday after the House passed an amended bill making changes to commutation policy. This bill is a mess. Uh, when I read through it, it, it looked like a second draft. The bill would give lawmakers more involvement in the Board of Pardons and Paroles, specifically the ability to approve the board's chair. Right now, the governor has that authority. We're just merely taking back the power that the Connecticut Constitution gives us. But GOP senators aren't happy with some of the changes. They say this bill would not notify victims' families when someone applies for a commutation or allow family members to be present at commutation hearings without permission. Sadly, here I am again today because, again, we're trying to go through the back door and pass policy without the public's knowledge. And Senate Republicans feel these edits are enough to block the bill altogether. I feel that no bill is better than this bill, and if we have to run out the clock, we will. House leaders on the Judiciary Committee say they kept Senate Republicans in the loop last week and believe their bill is good policy. Literally by the Senate Republicans trying to block this legislation, they're going back to the status quo ante that they complained about. They are putting politics over policy. We worked in a bipartisan fashion to pass good policy. They seem to want to play politics. Well. Senate Republican leaders told me today they haven't heard anything yet on if or when this bill could be brought up on the Senate floor, but they have 41 amendments and hope to use those to stall the measure until the end of session next week. Jen, Ben. Emma, thank you. Well, the state capitol is putting in a temporary mask mandate as the Senate seeing a rise in COVID cases. All visitors and guests will be required to wear masks in the common area in the third floor, on the third floor, and in the Senate gallery. Senators and staff will be rapid tested. The pre uh, precautions will be revisited on Thursday of this week. Well, the battle over education funding is on the ballot today in East Hampton. As part of a referendum, residents are voting on a budget proposal that would slash school district funding by about $800,000 and could lead to staff cuts. Fox 61's Jake Garcia will have a live report in less than two hours until those polls close. That's coming up at 6.30. Well, former First Lady Rosalind Carter has been diagnosed with dementia. The Carter Center releasing a statement saying the 95-year-old, quote, continues to live happily at home with her husband, enjoying spring in planes and visits with loved ones. The family hoping that by sharing the news, it will encourage other families to have important conversations about mental health and care. Her husband, former President Jimmy Carter, has been receiving hospice care at their Georgia home since February.